Hello and welcome to the second part of this demonstration of segment routing using ONOS. In this video, we will trace an active ping through the network by looking at all the flow entries the packets match on as they make their way through the switches. As before, we will use the controller CLI to gain visibility into what's happening in the underlying data plane. But before we do that, um, I'd like to show that this network in the data plane behaves like any segment routed network should. So for example, these hosts are connected uh, to routers uh, which behave like the gateways into uh, the routed network. So for example, in host 1, which is uh, 10200 you can ping its gateway, which is 10200 uh, and uh, the router's response as they should. You can also ping any uh, router's loopback interface IP um, like you would expect to, whether it's uh, 192.168.0.2 or 08, which is the loopback interface IPs for routers 102 and 108. But we, the one we actually want to trace to the network is the ping between host 1 and host 2, uh, which has already been started um, in um, in the terminal for host 1. The ping between host 1 and host 2 takes the ECMP shortest path through the network. Router 101 pushes the global label 106 for the destination router and then hashes the packet out of the three outgoing interfaces towards 102 and 103. So let's see what these uh, rules look like. In router 101, we will first look at uh, the IP table uh, to see the IP rule uh, that the packet matches on. Um, since it does longest prefix matching, uh, this packet towards host 2 will match on the rule that says 10202 24. Uh, the instructions indicate that it should go to the ACL table, but we know there's nothing in there, so it will end up in group 6. So let's take a closer look at group 6 which is an ECMP group or open flow type select. And this particular ECMP group has three buckets for the three interfaces, three outgoing interfaces along the ECMP shortest path. The actions that happen inside the bucket are essentially setting the source and destination max and pushing uh, the global label 106 um, towards the destination router 106. Uh, <clears throat> if you look at all the groups in router 101, um, and in fact, if you watch these groups, we can see that the active ping um, results in the group uh, counters increasing, as well as the per bucket counters uh, increasing. So you can see that it's fairly evenly divided if you hash on the ICMP sequence uh, numbers for um, uh, this active ping. Now if we look at one of the possible destinations of that hash, which is router 102, and we will look at the MPLS table uh, in router 102 to see um, what rule the packets match on. Since the packets are labeled with the global label 106, it will match on the rule um, for that particular uh, label. And as you can see, there are two rules for that particular label, but since this is a single packet, it is a bottom of stack um, uh, label, and so it will um, go towards group 13. But notice that um, this particular uh, rule uh, does not push or pop off the label. It instead really just lets the incoming label be the same as the outgoing label. In, in segment routing terminology, this is a continue operation that maps to a swap operation with the same label uh, in MPLS. And again, uh, it, uh, at router 102, it pushes out of a group uh, that has a couple of buckets towards router 105, which is what we see um, inside that group. And then at router 105, we again look at the MPLS table uh, to see that it matches on 106 and then the actions this time are to pop off that label and send it towards uh, group 14 
uh, which also goes to uh, router 106. Now this pop happens because router 105 is the penultimate hop before uh, 106. And then in router 106, we can look at the IP table. It's a simple um, IP lookup on the naked IP packet that comes in uh, and it goes towards host 2. And the same can be seen on the reverse path as well. In the next video, uh, we will look at how we can recover from failures uh, in this network.